this is our list right here. He supplied these parts. We're going to go through it. He's bought all the clutch parts to do the install, which just to give you a heads up, it's cheaper to buy it from us. We have an install kit. We just looked at his receipt. They paid a lot of money for it. He has the spoon clutch. We're going to show you that here in detail because we haven't seen one in a long time. But clutch install parts. He has the spoon flywheel, the spoon pressure plate, and the spoon disc, which... We have all the factory stuff. We can maybe put this side by side. If you look very carefully, it says Honda right there. It's in says... a Honda bag. And then Honda right there in a Honda bag. Yeah. So it has spoon part numbers. This is probably aftermarket because I believe they make this. Let's go ahead and show you this first side by side. So this is all marketed by spoon. If you guys are familiar with spoon, they take tend to take OEM parts and kind of take them to the next level. But looking at this. I took the took OEM parts and put them in a new box. Yeah, that's not even been opened. It's that's the factory Honda bag. That's the factory Honda bag. Let's go get some factory Honda parts. Put them side by side first. We're not knocking this stuff. But we're just trying to bring it to your attention because we've put spoon on a pedestal for so long, and then over the years we found out that pedestal isn't that high. It's just kind of like that much better. This is the spoon disc. This is the Honda disc that came out of a Honda bag. It looks pretty much the same. If I'm looking at anything, this might just be a different generational thing. There is some yellow paint on the springs. I don't know. Could you see any difference? It's the same part. I mean, it even has the same little yellow paint line right there. Yeah, on the same spot. Flip it over. Same color springs. Yeah, same color springs. Yellow, light blue. Yeah. Yes, this is 100% a Honda part in a spoon box. Okay. Not that there's anything wrong with this. This is probably the finest clutch you can put in your S2000 if you're not requiring more power. It's only that the, you limit it, the limitation to how much power it can hold is why we change it. If not, this is still the best clutch I think we've ever felt. So this is the pressure plate right here. This is the factory Honda pressure plate and the spoon plate. I was hoping to see like maybe like a drill mark or something you could tell it was balanced more or something. Yeah, at least uh, something to look like the balanced end. Yeah, it's just it's got the SCC part. right here, and then it's got the Honda embossed right here. Yeah, the D3L, the little. Uh, Ink stamp. So we have D3L, we have Honda, FCC, ink stamp with a different number, and yellow paint spot on the bottom. Yeah, put them side by side. If there is something different about this, if any of you guys are spoon experts, let us know if they do something to it. If they do, it's not visual at all. I wish, like George said, they'd put a drill mark in it or do something to look like they have balanced it. But it doesn't look like they did. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of place where you could. I mean, what would you do if you was to balance it and to find like, out it's off? Take a little bit out of here somewhere, maybe. Or I think this is actually a weight, so you could shave that. But this one doesn't have one on it. so. Ah, there it is. They took the weight off. Yep. They left yep. a little weight on this one for balance, but they, they took off that one. Yeah, they wanted to make it lighter. So it'll feel more raw when it vibrates. We actually ran one of these on a balancer that used to balance our flywheels. We actually found out the factory pressure plate was very good. And the AP1 flywheels were very good right from the get-go. Talking about flywheels, is the spoon flywheel right here. Now this definitely looks different. This doesn't look like an AP1 flywheel. That's definitely a billet piece. It's one piece. There's no area here for the gear. You see the balance marks right here. Actually, it's just one but it's cut out all the way out of here. So it's much lighter than the AP-1, but that's a nice looking piece. It is. So that's what we like to see. You put your spoon name on it, make it look like you've done something different. So let's take the factory one out. Let's start putting this stuff in. He has the install parts here. He has spark plugs. We're doing AP-2 retainers, springs. He wants us to look over the seals. If the seals look sketchy, he wants us to replace the seals. Let's put our clutch thing back and let's get going. So he supplied his own keepers and retainers and springs. So we mentioned that it doesn't need springs, but sometimes it's about peace of mind. Like we always say, if it makes you feel better and it makes you 
uh, feel a little bit more comfortable revving the car out knowing that everything is fresh and clean and new well why not that's kind of it's not OCD it's just about being picky and wanting things as close to perfect as you can get that's me disguising an OCD thing anyway valve cover comes off all the parts come out we'll show you briefly what goes into that but basically the whole valve train assembly comes out with the rockers all comes out in one piece and then it gives you access to the springs and retainers we're going to check the valve seals at the same time he wanted those checking we can look them over make sure the rubber and the spring is in good shape that it's still gripping the stem of that valve but again not typically a problem that we see on this kind of car see this one here there is a huge gap between the s and the light this is the fixture this is where it should be look how much distance there is right there so it's completely off you see how this is completely straight with our body line this s2000 on the driver's side not only is it going downhill it's got a huge gap right here passenger side actually doesn't look too bad I have no idea what Abraham Lincoln's voice would sound like. My name is Abraham Lincoln. I am not around anymore. That's pretty good, George. But what I used to that? be. It's what? Abraham Lincoln. No, but what? The little thing. Is it the hat from the... Negative battery terminal cover. Oh. It was just in this engine bay. This is what happens when you get bored. No, it's because we're trying to figure out store issues. So that is what it looks like. Again, yellow springs on the intake. Blue on the exhaust. The Honda filter here, for one, is the information for tightening the filter. So you're going to need one of these tools if you're going to tighten it, because this is difficult to do by hand. This fits absolutely perfect. We have these in the store. Obviously, it's a good idea to use it to loosen it. You can go by the torque setting right here, or if you go in the Honda book, it's going to tell you how to do this by degrees. But do it a little tighter than hand, because these are notorious for coming loose, believe it or not. This is something really common. We just pulled the center console off. This is the rubber isolator and the clip. We sell this in the store because this happens so often. If you don't remove this right, so many people will break this clip. There is a procedure how to take it off, which I've shown in a lot of videos. I mean, the rubber is okay. The plastic's broken. It's all sticky and yucky. And of course, the isolator is all turned to gum. It's like rubber and goo. Ugh. Look at that. It used to be foam. So we'll mark that down and mention it to him if he wants to do that. He probably will. He sent the car a long way. He's replacing a lot of the OEM parts. Let's go through his list and his parts list and see if he has one of these first. If not, we'll contact him and uh, recommend he replaces both. Just how gooey that is. I know you could clean it, but when you've sent the car this far, and you want it right, why not do it right? It's amazing that this here turns to this. Look at it, it's just gross. It's like dirt. <laughs> so the reason of this is basically isolation. It takes some of the sound out from the inside. It stops it uh, transmitting some of the val uh, the, the drivetrain sound, which S2000s are kind of noisy, so this makes a difference. It might only make a small amount of difference, but like we say often, a lot of small changes add up to a big change. The shifter didn't feel bad, but it had a little bit of play in it. Replacing these parts and cleaning everything and putting nice fresh rubber grease really makes the shifter feel more precise, uh, less less uh, play in it. So there's a few aftermarket shifters out there. There's some of them we've had experience with and they tend to, uh, if the material is harder than the aluminum in the shifter itself, they tend to wear that out pretty prematurely and then there's a couple of companies that offer a brass ball here which we've actually seen the brass ball wear out now I'm not calling anybody's names I haven't tested them all 
my personal experience is still the factory one, brand new, clean parts, clean grease, just really makes the shifter feel absolutely wonderful. So we're gonna take this, completely clean it out, replace the parts, and then same in here. This area here, we're gonna clean all of that goo out of there, this aluminum here, clean that, re-grease it, it's gonna make all the difference. These are the components that we're gonna replace. We call this the cage and then this the ball. I'm gonna take all this apart and clean it. I've said this a million times, but I'm gonna say it again. When you replace this, make sure you put it in hot water. I mean, as hot as you, don't boil it, but really, really hot. Because this little guy will crack right here. You see where the little splits are? Maybe not here, because right now it's 90 degrees here in Florida, but where you are, if that's cold, it will crack, and that sucker is expensive. That is more expensive than that. Often when you buy these, these two pieces are marked differently. This is sold for more, even though in the Honda parts, this is cheaper than this, which is kind of crazy and smaller, but this is known for breaking. This is the rubber piece that's all sticky and gooey on his, which you see some of it is from my hands. And then this is the ring. The, again, we sell this as the install kit. If you get the master install kit, you get this, 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 and of course the new foam isolator with some fresh Eurora grease. I want to pop this apart. I've shown you on past videos how to do it, so I'm not going to show it. Um, I'm, I kind of just muscle it off with my hands. I pry it off and pry this off and then go wash my hands. Um, I'm sure you're going to want to watch a guy that wears those uh, really cute gloves and does all this and shows it on video. I don't do that. I just get my hands dirty and get it out of the way and then we'll put this back together. microwave I bought when I first came to the United States in 1994 and it still works and I still tease my wife about it all the time because since we've been married we've gone through probably three of those really snooty looking microwaves that are all stainless and look nice and have LED lights in it and have a, a, a panel that looks like the inside of a Tesla that you can program it to do 45,000 things but it doesn't do any of them well all right a sucker is hot and steamy We'll let that sit for about a minute. We'll grease this up. As I've said in the past, make sure you pay attention to the orientation of this. That little bump there, when I put these in the vise here, I always put that bump away from me. That way we don't do it twice. Grease all this up, grease this up, get it really nice and lubed. Get this sucker lubed up, pop that on, same thing. Just use your uh, claws here to push it on or you know, put a rag around it. It will go in with a snap and spray grease on your hands, but hey, that's part of doing it. It's part of the car life. Drive shaft bolts, this is a reason why we replace them with the hardened ones. Those took a lot of beating to get out. When I say beaten, I actually beat my thumb with a hammer, trying to beat those out. Two of them I had to cut out. So another reason why we include the hardened drive shaft bolts and they're in the store, you can purchase. This is what it looks like. It's all stock. Let's see how much material is on that bearing. It felt really springy. The clutch was difficult to operate, it just wanted to engage and uh, not a whole lot of feel to it. As you see, the fingers are almost straight. It's not terrible. Ouch. Bang my head on the lift. So we replaced all this. The slide, obviously the seal, the men's seal is bought, all that stuff. Let's get this off, we'll take a look at it when it's on the ground. There is a great time to do the starter right there. He wants to do the starter because it's been hanging up. Occasionally I've seen our video where we tried to have one rebuilt and it didn't really fix it. It just lasted for a short amount of time. So we're going to replace this with a brand spanking new unit. So the transmission seal was a little wet. So it's a good idea to replace it. That's what it looks like behind the slide. That's where your transmission seal would be. And then back here, 
when you remove the flywheel, there is the main seal. I see it's a little wet. It was wet between the flywheel and the crank. There's a little dust around there that kind of gives you a telltale sign it's leaking. So this is something we always replace. I should say the new starter's in. Uh, always a good idea to replace these. Just make it easier in the long run. This is the new Slave East uh, supplied, and this is the rubber boot. We usually recommend you replace this. We include it in our install kit, just because the old one usually gets really crusty. This one isn't too bad, but this usually breaks off. And this is to keep all the weather out of your clutch area. It's very important. There's a reason why Honda spent so much time designing this thing. So he supplied this and this. We have this. If you know what that says, comment below. Because I have no clue. It's really cool though. And he has the spoon line to go from here to the body. I'll show you that here. There it is right here, the spoon line. It's actually nice. It comes in a cool bag. It comes with the new washers. We don't en envy you up north guys at all having to deal with this. We're so spoiled that all our bolts come out and they're all nice and clean and shiny. Go through here and actually take a picture of it with my phone oh, that's and right. change it. So I have read the instructions. I'm not doing it this time because I've done these enough. But No, you, you read this. Uh, you're fluid. I know exactly what it says. In that. I'm not going to tell you though. No. Well, you don't need to. That explains it too. Yeah. So very cool. If you haven't seen these, I'm just kidding around. Hope you enjoy the humor. These basically take up the distance between the bolt and the subframe. It stops any kind of play between it. Everybody that does this really raves about it. It's supposed to make a huge difference. I haven't done it personally on my car, but so many people come back and say, yes, that was definitely a noticeable thing. You got to use this lubricant. That way they don't bind up because if it doesn't slide in there correctly, you will warp this surface and damage it. You won't get the bolt in. If you ever need to take it apart, you can do it. So it is very important to do this anti-seize. All right, so the clutch is done. Master slave and line. The clutch is bled. The engine components are gonna be next. And then when we do that, we'll do the engine oil too. But trans is done, diff is done. So we'll go ahead and start it. Make sure the clutch works. See how that flywheel reacts too. All right? Yeah. The starter sounds so nice when they're new. They just light right up. You can hear how quick they start. The motor doesn't sound bad, but when we do the retainers and keepers, we'll do a valve adjustment because a uh, valve cover gasket is set. He has the springs. We said the springs are not really necessary, but he's already bought them. We have to remove the retainer. The spring is right there. We may as well do it. When we do the engine, we're going to check and replace the, time, uh, the, the serpentine belt if needed. Check the air filter. Check the cabin filter. He wants us to go over the car, so it's always a good idea just to check it. He did bring a spark plug, so we'll put the spark plugs in there at the same time. Does the clutch feel nice? Yeah, it's really it, it. it was really springy before. It's weird. Some of these clutches, when they start to wear, they have a very funny feeling. It's almost like the spring is way, way stronger than it should be. And it's very difficult to kind of feather it. It just wants to kick you up, especially if there's a notch on that slide and the bearing wants to run over the slide and it doesn't operate smoothly. We mentioned this so many times, but I'm gonna tell you again, we like to do like an initial break in with no weight on the wheels. Again, it's super overkill, but kind of gives a clutch chance to engage really and get some, get some friction on it before we put heat in it. They feel the uh, throttle, hold on. Oh, 
responsive, isn't it? We should have weighed that flywheel. I didn't think about it. We should have weighed it compared to the stock one. <laughs> So when you're upright and you clutch, yeah. this is what you're doing right here. That's when these things start to feel super stiff. That's just what they do. That is what is going on. This is the release bearing. This is the guide slide. This this is part of our kit. But these two parts are supposed to uh, and slide we're doing, freely. We're just doing this all yeah, the time. And then you pull on your you press your brake pedal. It's pulling on this, which is upright and you clutch. You see how sticky this is. That's why they feel terrible. Now you're pulling this this way and trying to guide your clutch that's why sometimes it's very difficult to modulate the clutch and it makes you think the clutch is bad and often it's this part right here which is why we're going to use Eurora grease now that is a quick tease we do have a few greases we're going to be testing I haven't forgot about that I did talk about it on another video I think we've got three greases including the genuine Honda grease we're going to test them all unfortunately some of the test equipment I ordered uh, it defaulted and shipped to my brother-in-law's house. Don't ask me why. He has it. So I've got to get with him. He's a good guy, yeah, but he lives an hour and a half away. That's why, though. So, just, they're like, he's a good guy. We'll ship it to him. Yeah, yeah. he needs some test equipment. We don't yeah. know why. So once that appears and we get with him, we will do some testing. This was in the car, too, by the way. Or above the transmission. Cool, huh? We did replace the pedal buttons. These are the three. One for the brake and two for the clutch. This is always a good idea to replace those. They're notorious for braking after 10, 15 years or so, they fall apart, the car won't start, cruise control won't work, your tail lights stay on and you end up needing to replace them at some point. So we've already done those. Okay, so real quick, thanks for watching the video. I just want to tell you a quick story. If you're interested, if not, we'll see you on the next video. If you like to hear some of my history and some of my chit chat type stuff. I want to share some things with you. Before I started the YouTube, I did some updates and it was for some of my customers that were in other states. Well, he started with one of the guys that was stationed in Iraq and he basically told me, uh, this is how much money I want to spend. Here's the car. Here's the key features. Do whatever you want to do. It was way back before we were really advertising this stuff and it was just word of mouth. And he said, this is how much money I want to spend. And he goes, I can get to the computer. I think it was once a week. And he had something like 10 minutes on the computer. So he said, if you can put pictures up, we used to use a site at the time called Tampa Racing. If you look on that site and go to the shop forums, you'll see our name is still in there. And you can see some of the stuff that we did in the 90s and early 2000s. Anyway, I would put a couple of pictures up so he would see it. And then I thought to myself, well, if he only has 10 minutes in front of the computer, he only has limited time. He needs to be, you know, talking to family. He can't be sitting there looking at pictures and trying to get all this information. So what I would do is make like a 30 second video of just the progress. And I found out it, it gave these guys uh, something to look forward to. I mean, they're over there fighting for the country and going through all kinds of stuff that we don't, you know, back here, we don't even comprehend. And we have the ability to share what we're doing with him and to hear from him to say I'm so excited to see what you did even right down to changing bolts I watched the video 10 times oh my god it was so cool and he gave you that really cool feeling it's kind of like giving a gift to somebody there's so much more you know emotion in the excitement seeing it in somebody else's eyes and seeing somebody else's reaction and it makes you want to do more so that's kind of where the video started that was before you know I was doing YouTube and it, it gave us like that connection with a customer and it was to a point where when the customer some of these customers would never even met and i know they would get this extra money from you know being in a compass zone or whatever and they obviously wanted to look forward to something and spend it but they would send us a car and this happened i would say at least six times maybe more they would send us a car and send us 30 grand and go, well, just, just document whatever you do and whatever money you don't spend, give me a bag, but I want to spend it all. And we would have cars, we'd put engines in, send them over to Superior, get paint jobs, do carbon fiber parts, all these things that was on their list. And then we'd throw in a whole bunch of extra stuff. And they would come to pick it up. And there were, some of these guys would be almost in tears from the fact of seeing this progression of their car and kind of seeing us build it and feeling like they get to know us. 
and then they would see us in person and see the car and it, it was it was very emotional it was one of those things to see you know a grown man break down from seeing his car built it was one of those things i wish i'd have recorded more of back in the day but uh it's one of those things that is part of your history is part of makes you who you are and it, it makes you want to do better all the time so that's the end of my chit chat thanks for watching see you in the next video don't forget enjoy your cars